that I take has something to do with this um, pectin, citrus pectin. Because this is an old article here. All right. Um, 1991. Pardon? 1991. Yeah, 1991. Now, here's the other part. It, asks, it tells you to be careful of the sources that you get your information from. What does it say at the bottom of, not that page, turn it over. Where did I get this from? Right down at the bottom, what does it say? What's the source? Consumer Reports on Health. If you look at this other article about should you trust that medical news, it is also a little bit newer, 2012, it's also from Consumer Reports on Health. So that is, that is one that I trust. I also take about three or four medical school newsletters. And the only one that I don't take that's not, not uh, consistent with that is another newsletter that's called Bottom Line, which is more of a holistic, you know, kind of herbal and, you know, that kind of thing. That well, it's kind of interesting because they'll tell you things such as if you have um, athlete's feet, take cornmeal and brush it, you know, on your feet or in your shoes. And it actually works. So it's, you know, that's the only one that's outside of the medical school newsletters that I trust. So the idea about trusting the medical news, that's really important. You know, don't get, um, don't get, um, I guess, uh, waylaid by fake news, like the, um, the nobody really landed on the moon, like your uncle, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, again, I think this is a topic that would be useful for your students. You can download all this stuff, you know. And um, considering uh, the other topics that are going to be in whatever course that you teach, after STAR, you have time. Uh, but there, sometimes you just have a few minutes. They'll cut a, you know, they'll cut a period short, and you only got a ten-minute class or something. Think about things that, that like this, topics that would be useful, very practical for your students that you got ready to go, and you can jump in with it. Okay. So um, the next thing we want to review, we're all, we're talking about planning for your two E here. Get out your effective teaching strategies. That meta analysis. Gold sheet, gold sheet. Gold. Oh, is it gold? I thought you said gold. Oh, it's the lilac. Yeah. Okay, so what I would like for you to review because again, when you're planning your lesson today, these are the things that you're going to try to include in your lesson. The first one is called enhanced context. So what does enhanced context mean for your lesson? Somebody have an idea how they're using enhanced context for their specific lesson? Okay, so what about you? Have you looked at that yet for your lesson? Examples of the concept in your lesson? Yeah, we have um, differentiating uh, a compound and an element. Mm -hmm. and so just finding things around the house that every household has. Okay, okay. Um, and collaborative learning. Now remember that's not cooperative learning. Cooperative learning is a form of collaborative learning. It has a lot of advantages over just grouping students and having them have conversations. But as you read in that, or as I read in that article about ELL students, that's important. ELLs are certainly important for any of the other types of students. So think about how you are going to make uh, collaborative learning occur in your lesson. If it is a science lesson, you are required to use cooperative learning. Mm -hmm. So in here, you are required to use cooperative learning. Uh, questioning strategies. 
Are you formulating your questioning strategies? No, not just why. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, all of your all of your questions have to be on your PowerPoint and the answers. Not at the same time, of course. You're going to animate it, so if you have some discussion, and then you can put up the answer, if you would. Um, inquiry, you're definitely going to have all of your lessons are going to be inquiry, because we've designed it that way. Um, what about manipulating of materials? We had these boxes out here in the back. Not one of you went back there to look at those materials. I'm the, I asked Ruby, I said, what is going on here? How come these students are not looking at these manipulatives that they could be using in this lesson? Can we stop? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, they're right now there. Yeah. yeah, Pat, Ruby, why don't you go ahead and pull them out and put them back there. They can stay out there. Uh, or back there. And then the uh, testing strategies, remember, don't, do not mean a question can be a testing strategy. So it's a, what we call a formative assessment. So a question during a lesson is a formative assessment. So it can be that simple or it can be something more complex. So you would be doing, um, uh, doing using testing strategies with you asking questions or asking students to explain their thinking. How did they learn this or what does it mean to them? How could they put it, apply it in their own lives? That's a very good question to ask kids because they're going to think about applications in their age group that you're not going to think about even as young as you are. You're not going to think about there, and you know, and in their own context, because different communities, different uh, ethnicities have different uh, contexts. That is not, you know, depending on where you teach. And if you've got a variety of ethnicities in your students or community types uh, in your classroom, you need to have examples from each of those types. That's why you have to know your students. It helps to drive around the neighborhoods. Where your students come from and sometimes it, it really helps if you take pictures of things that you can put in the lesson from their neighborhood because they're going to recognize that they're going to be really surprised that you know them that well <laughs> okay what are you thinking Tyler? Oh, no, was... <laughs> what were you thinking it was creepy <laughs> take a picture of their house put it on the no i wasn't thinking their house i was thinking something you know wildflowers on a corner as you can see what Joe likes to do on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and that relates to the teacher we're studying today because. Um, and then instructional technology. This pretty much is talking about students using instructional technology. Uh, it can be teachers, but it's also um, what we know is students are using technology. It fits into pictorial. It does not fit into concrete. It's okay. I mean, it's good, but just don't think that it takes the place of hands-on. It does not. Even when the student is doing it? Mm -hmm. If they're using the technology. Uh, like you'll see, in fact, you should be looking for simulations in your lessons, uh, some of your lessons, not all of them. And so that could be part of an exploration uh, or an elaboration, which you're not doing on this particular lesson. But it's not going to happen. It should not happen until the kids have that concrete experience. Now, a concrete experience could be something that's um, fairly simple. I don't think I've I don't think I've got a copy of something that I was thinking about. Uh, looking for something that had the uh, moon, the earth, and the sun, and little figures, you know, when I talk about Ruby, that, that picture. I think it must be on the student teaching, so next break we'll get it. Uh, there are companies like uh, this one that my, my friend has that um, she calls it science cut-ups, and so it has a lot of really nice ideas, but again, this is only after they have the physical um, experience that they would be moving pictures around or you know whatever you're going to have them do with pictures that would include those simulations the online simulations <clears throat> and then uh, the last one uh, enhanced materials yours will automatically be enhanced materials why 
Taylor? Mm -hmm. The answer is really simple. It's not, it's not a hard question. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are yours automatically going to be enhanced? Why are you automatically going to be using enhanced materials? Read what enhanced materials is. Because we're using um, hands on things such as, or we're doing. No. Mm -hmm. okay. Strategies, modified instructional materials. Rewriting, simplifying, modifying. Who's creating you, the lesson? You are. You are. You are, you, you are enhancing materials. You're not taking somebody's lesson and just mimicking it. It works better if you take somebody else's lesson and you tweak it and you make it better in some ways and you make it your own. Students learn more. Okay. So yours are automatically going to be enhanced because you're creating it. Okay, so that gives you some fundamentals that uh, you're going to be building on. So what I want you to do, what time is it? Time for another walk? 6.32. Need a walk? No? Okay. All right, so here's what you're going to do. We're going to start looking at your two E's. Who is team one? Oh, that is us, yeah. <laughs> All right, so team one, we need for you to put your learning objective up there on the board. And you're going to tell us what you've learned from the national standards about it. Oh, it's probably time for snack. Do y'all want to get up and get a snack now? <laughs> y'all are really content. I'm just dead. Yeah. 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 Okay. You have your laptop? I do have a laptop. We also have this kit, yeah. Right. So Not on the new one that she just had. Put the teeps, that's good. Yeah. Put the teeps up there and tell us what you know about it. What you've learned, what to do, what not to do, etc. Are y'all loving lesson planning yet? Well, I don't know. You know, looking at all of the yeah. students, this is very hard. This it's is crazy. We, we could have got bogged down last yeah. class. I don't know if we have exactly what you want us to have for this. Can, Guess why we're doing it in class? Yeah, yeah. It is hard, but I don't know about you, but I love it. I just love planning. <laughs> I really get off on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm struggling with the inquiry, but uh -huh. I've, just because I've never done that before. Usually, like we did a lesson plan in PE today because the kids are coming on Monday, yeah. and I had a lot of fun with that. I'm just personally struggling. What was your What was your objective there? Objective <laughs> is that we are enhancing the skills of. <laughs> Okay, stop. What word did you just say? You're enhancing no. what? <laughs> Guys, listen to this conversation. Guys, listen to this conversation. Enhancing skills. Skills. What do you know about how you teach a skill? What 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 instructional model? Direct instruction. Direct instruction. <laughs> okay, so you would not teach a skill with inquiry. Okay. So, but you need to have all the components to it. So the input and modeling, so you're modeling how to do this skill, and then they're they're doing it, and you're checking with them and say, yeah, okay, now you got it down, and then the third portion, okay, now practice it. Yes. Which is exactly, I mean, Which we're demonstrating, and then like we're letting them do it, and then after all the demonstrating, we're playing a game that we came up with. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's exactly what we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what you would do. Yeah. So, but that's why, like, the inquiry, I'm struggling just to, like, figure out where to put everything. That's why we're doing it. Exactly. Exactly. No, I was just wondering what you said. I'm really long with it. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. But the idea is you need to ask questions. Okay, so tell us what you've learned, Team 1, about the, what do the standards say about this? Is this, is this TEKS consistent with 
the grade level that the standards have it. Where do they have students learning about elements in the standards? Yeah, so um, well, we did find. Okay, stop. Stop, guys. So we did find that the 6.5 CET, the differentiate between elements and compounds on the most basic level, did it here pretty much across the board for all the standards. Some of it's kind of more abstract, and depending on what standard you're looking at, it's either more abstract or pretty direct. What it, grade level did you find the word elements in? Element? We mm -hmm. found that one in. <coughs> First one, or we were looking in sixth grade, but I think they had it defined in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Well, not think, you have to know. All right, so we will look to make sure that it's defined in fifth grade. Right, so, so we know for a fact it is defined in the sixth grade. So, what you want to do is you want to do this would be where you do a word search. You just look for Ella. You know, what, where, where do the standards recommend it? Where is it in the teeth? What grade level? Are we supposed to be saying, what are we supposed to be saying? I said. She's asking where it defines elements inside the teeps. What's on your board? 6.5C, differentiate between elements and compounds. On okay, so it's sixth grade. Yes. Well, that's, that's the answer. Where where are elements in the standards? Somebody have the standards up? Can you look for that? Somebody do it online for them real quick. Do you mean all the standards? Oh, just choose one. Choose the framework. I like to do the framework first. Yeah, the framework should be good. Where does the term element come from the grade level? This is 1A. Um, the page number, yeah. there are two page numbers when you're looking at it online. You know, there's a one that's a paper copy and then there's an online copy. We did not address that. Ruby, would you get that 
one I was marking a while ago that had CCRS on there. And, uh, yeah. And uh, put, put the page number like right in here, Ruby, where I'm pointing. Right here. That's because I think mine is a disciplinary core idea. It should be the same though. Yes. PS 1A would be the same no matter whether you do it DCI or uh, the top one. Uh, it, but, yeah, framework. It will be the same in the NGSS or the framework because the NGSS uses the framework. That's what we were trying to, to say last time. I mean, this is complicated, I know. That's why you need to ask questions. And so the one she cited would be MS or MSPS1. Okay, what's MS? High school. So MSPS1. So this looks to me like it's high school. So let me see your Okay, so here's MSPS1. Right here. Developed models that describe the atomic, uh, well, PS1 dash 1. So all of these are physical science concepts in middle school. But here's strand 1, strand 2, strand 3, strand 4, etc. So MSPS1, what? Where are atoms in there? I mean, no, is that right? Elements. Atoms? Elements, sorry, elements, yeah. It doesn't even say the word element there. So can you look up elements in the framework or the NGSS? It still doesn't say element. Still doesn't say elements. I'm in fifth grade right now. It says make observations and measurements to identify materials based on their properties, but it doesn't. Yeah, that's not elements. Yeah, it doesn't say elements. Okay, what about compounds? It doesn't have compounds. Okay. Compound. Okay, well let's go yeah. on for now and we'll come back to it. So that's what you're going to do. So you're going to try to use keywords to identify very quickly what level your concept or that teach is in the national standards. And that's helpful because you know that they might have seen it before. Well, it's helpful because you know the experts think it's cognitively appropriate at that level. So if it's not in K-5, then that means we shouldn't have it in any of our K-5 teams. But it's okay for 6A. So that's, that's what you're thinking about. And so you want to, uh, again, help you feel comfortable that kids can learn this because our national standards indicate that they can. Okay, doesn't mean, it's, it's not a perfect one, so it doesn't mean, yes, they will learn it. Uh, but remember, they've got kindergarten through fifth grade, as well as pre-kindergarten, um, that you assume they would have some experiences. And when you get when you get kids from particularly low-income families, they just don't have those kind of experiences. They don't have those kind of conversations. Uh, low-income children come into pre-K or kindergarten. I'm going to make this number up, but it's huge. Three thousand words behind a average income family. So they come in with a lot of deficits. So, as I said, you know, you're, make, you're making an assumption that there is an average amount that they're coming in, but that's why you have to know your students. So if they don't have that background, then you go back to, to uh, K-5 and you teach those prerequisite concepts so you can put the concepts for your grade level in. Okay, um, so we don't know yet about that, but we're going to keep working on it a little bit later. All right, so what did you learn, though, about looking at, com at um, compounds and elements from this? Or I, I actually think the, the framework, see, here's the, guys, here's the framework right here in the middle, okay? That's what the framework says. I think this is easier to understand than the assessment of this. And okay, that's what I cited was the PS1A first uh, bullet point. Okay. Substances are mm -hmm. made from different types of Red. substances of atoms determines how the combinations are arranged and rearranged to form all world substances, electrons, that the So you've got let me borrow. So 
Here, here's what I would do, guys. I would, I would <coughs> underline some things in here. So um, here you've got atoms. That's a science word. Um, you've got molecules. But notice, look what it says right here. MSPS1. So this is middle school. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Is that too small? Mm -hmm. about that? Yeah, that's okay, right. so see right there, you can see it's MSPS1. Okay? That's why I like paper copies. Now, you can download the PDF, though, and highlight the same way. Okay, what is this? What is that? What did I just underline? What does that say? What is a pure substance? No. Likely, so we need to read down and make sure, but I would assume that's going to be an element. So I'm going to pretend like it is, and I'm going to write that keyword right there. That's what I was going to ask you. If we can't cite it directly, could we infer it based on whatever the standards are telling us? Yeah. As long as it's inferred to, maybe not directly mm -hmm. addressed. Mm -hmm. Like that. In parentheses, the things right after it, where it says MSPS 1 2. Yeah. Is that telling you, what is that telling you? It tells you it's in strand two and three, apparently. So if you if you go back up here, strand one, what did it say, one and two and three. So two and three, right here. Okay. So it's telling you that the assessment of, of this is here. That would be the eighth grade level test question, I guess you would say, or assignment to see if they understand it. The assessment of that statement, that you put when it says pure substance where you wrote element, uh -huh. will occur in both of those? It's assessed in both these yeah, two right here. Two. It's assessed here. It's assessed. So it's kind of, when you say assess, it's like included in like, okay, the NGSS to me are assessment standards. So the, this down here, which is the framework, are the benchmarks for science literacy or the National Science Education Standard. It gives you information that's like this. But what the NGSS does is they said, okay, at the end of the eighth grade, here's how you can determine. I'm going to get this over here. Here's how you can. Here's how you can determine if they understand these concepts down here. So you're going to have students analyze and interpret the properties of substance before and after the substance interact to determine if a chemical reaction has occurred. And then this one also. So this would be this would be a summative. So they need to know what elements were, what compounds were, what a pure substance is. An element is a pure substance. And it doesn't make any difference if you've got a, a molecule of it or if you, well, a molecule of an element. That's not good. Atom. Okay, atom of an element or you've got a truckload. They're all going to they're gonna have exactly the same characteristics. It's not going to change. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Which, that is it. I think the more I can use the case, I can almost think that. Yeah. Yes. It's hard. I told y'all that. I, I've had a hard time. I've been digging through this about three years now. So I'm telling you, I know it's hard. That's why I said to me, it's probably better to start here in the framework. And then you can look up here. Um, if you've got, who has an eighth grade teak? Okay, so those of you with the eighth grade teak, you might look at some of this to see if that might be something that you can use. These these are at the end of the eighth grade. All of these are. I think they're very complex. So this one is beyond an element. It's beyond a compound, right? So they're saying if you put two things together, how are you going to know you get a new substance? Okay. Question? Comment? Well, so the stuff 
at the top. Yeah. They're yeah. saying what they need to know by the end of the case. Oh, the assessment. It's right. how you would test what they need to know by the end of that grade. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, if so we it's on there. And it's 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 the DCI. So that's why I said if you go back to the framework, which has it, has it the narrative like this, to me this is a lot easier for me to plan a lesson around than one of these because this is by the end of the eighth grade. So unless I've got something, a concept that they should know by the end of the eighth grade, this is not really that helpful to me. That's why I told y'all to start with the framework. That makes sense. So it would be so fair to say that the bold sentence would be this is what they need to know, this is how you can teach it, and this is where you should stop. <clears throat> It's broken down into okay. like yeah. classifying state or clarification statements and then it's also uh, assessment boundaries. Okay, guys, look up here. So listen to his question. So it's a good one. And if you don't listen, I'm not going to be patient when you have this problem later on. All right, so my question was, would it be fair to say that this is kind of, you start off with a bold print, it's like this is what they here. should know. This, you have the clarification statement, this is ways you can test it, and the yes. assessment boundary is this is where you should stop and would be inappropriate. Okay, the clarification statement says mm -hmm. this is what it means, mm -hmm. and then the assessment boundary, where is it, i got to find it on here. Okay, assessment boundary right here. The assessment boundary says this is not what it means. Don't ask them questions, you know, test questions or whatever. So the assessment boundary says does not include valence electrons. That's for high school. Doesn't include bonding energy or discussing ions or depictions of individual atoms in a complex molecule, even like water. Okay. So this is this is really nice because it gives you a lot of guidance on things. Okay, so what else did you learn from studying this? Team one. Which reminds me, I picked up a pen that's really nice. It clicks to red or blue or green. Is that somebody's in here? Okay, it's mine now. <laughs> but they should be able to develop models to describe it. So not just to know, understand what what an element is and what a compound is, but be able to understand the models. But that says molecule. So can they can they develop a model to describe a, an element? They could, if it was a simple model. Like say, um, I mean, when could they? They should be able to do it by the end or during this lesson. Yeah, by the end of this lesson. Okay, so after they learn mm -hmm. what a model might look like, then they could develop a model of something else. Yeah. I like the skill you were talking about earlier. Okay. Even though the NGSS doesn't really directly state element, it does directly state elements in the benchmark for science literacy. I just didn't put the page number. I don't know why. I did put chapter four, physical setting and structure of matter, six through eighth grade. You're going to want that information on there because you want to go back and check yourself. I think I had it on another one I did. I just didn't print that one. I printed this one. Okay. You want to put that on the dock camera so they can see what you've got? Yeah. So, like I said before, even though it didn't, in the NGSS, it didn't direct, directly state, or in the K 12 framework, it didn't directly state elements. Where did it say it? I was on here. Oh. The atoms of any element are likely to be other atoms of the same element, but are different from the atoms of other elements. So that gives us our little great appropriateness. Now here's here's an interesting thing. In the teaks, um, it says um, on at the most uh, basic level, and it also uses. Um, that an element is a pure substance. Which one is that one? No, that's the one I think that you... B? It would be A. Oh, A. We shouldn't have taken that out. Because A could have been separated in into the two separate T's. Right. In the T's, 
it says that it is um, it talked about a pure substance. And there are teachers who are saying we should not use that language, but yet that's exactly what's in the national standards. It's a pure substance. Okay, what else did you learn? Anything else that you need to know before you start planning your lesson? Uh, Okay, so you know you got some corrections to make on there. Oh, I mean, I have stuff. I didn't know if she had anything that she wanted to talk about. Okay, go ahead. Her. Either one of you, doesn't matter. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you want to go over what, what, we what, did, you, what did you what learn from? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, for the star? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I just wrote down the number, but I didn't write uh, down. I haven't talked about it yet. So. Number three. Yeah. Uh. So we did look up uh, the star readiness items. So in 2016, tested the supporting standard. It was tested on question number three, and I kind of took the whole question out. It says some students are using samples to recruitment for different substances for lab investigations. They plan to observe the physical properties. And they kind of give a chart using all these elements that are in question. I didn't put the chart in there because it wouldn't let me copy it. And it said, which of these substances observed is an element? And the correct answer was A. So they basically gave them a chart full of compounds. OK, or, you like, need to put the chart, mm -hmm. all the graphics for star, put it in. Put it in? Mm -hmm. right. Because you're going to want, want to use a chart like that with your students. So it did give a data table full of, like, it had A, and it showed either an element formula or a molecule of, or a compound. Yeah, compound molecule, and you, the students had to choose if it was or if it wasn't, and the correct answer was A. I highlighted O2 just because I think a it's going to be a common misconception. Yeah, a common misconception because I know that if I was taking this test, they're like, oh, it's an element. I was like, okay, well, that has two by it, so that's not an element, that's a compound. Even though it's an elemental compound, it's still a compound. And the question asked for elements, not the compounds. This is at the end of eighth grade, though. Mm -hmm. This is a sixth grade teach. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that um, they should know that O2 doesn't. Yeah, I think by, by the end they, they would know oxygen is a, a gotcha. diatomic molecule. Although the teaks do not have anything about molecules in there, it's a that's a problem. Okay, so have you thought about what kind of activities that you might, or some examples? Where are your examples? But uh, uh, real life. Oh, we talked about the real life examples. Um, we said salt is a compound, and water, water, and a light aluminum foil. Well, aluminum could be used as a. That what are, yeah, element. that doesn't be an element. That's copper right. wire. Yeah. What are examples of elements that they might be familiar with? Aluminum foil. Elements. Is that not is that compound? I thought that was an element. Just a little bit. No, it's yeah. aluminum. Um, aluminum. The foil is not an element. Alum aluminum. Aluminum. So, aluminum, gold, carbon, as graphite or charcoal. Mm -hmm. oh, there's more. There's a lot oxygen. more. Oh, they can't. They can't interact with oxygen. Yeah. Um, they nickel. might they they yeah. are, they well, nickel, might right. know the word though. Nickel. Did you talk about pennies and nickels and maybe what they used to be made of, and then quarters used to be made of silver? Well, then we're we're oh, teaching yeah. them so, about currency. Silver. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, gold and silver and stuff like that. They can really have to. Okay. okay, so that's the next thing you should do is after you understand the standards. You understand the science, then you start putting in what are some examples there mm -hmm. that you can use. Oh, shit, print off that page. <laughs> um, now, we which, did have prerequisite knowledge. We went back, we found a, I think it was a fourth grade T, was the closest one, or was it the fifth grade? Which one? For what an element is. Like, oh, yeah. That would be fifth. up to it. I think it was fifth. I guess fifth grade. Yeah. Like I said, that's in my other one. I just didn't print that one out. Yeah, I wrote down where to find it, but I didn't write down 
the oh, exact. Wait, maybe not. That was the NGSS. NGSS. All right. And we didn't go over any activities yet because you told us not to go near activities until we were done right. with this. So, so you need to, but to, you need the real life examples, mm -hmm. applications, and so on. Now, what is missing here is a lesson about what is an element. So you have to assume for this lesson that students know that an element is a pure substance and no matter the bulk amount, et cetera, you know, it's not going to change. So. You have to assume they know that and then build your lesson on that. Okay, so what's some other examples of elements and are, are compounds that students would know at age 11? We already listed a bunch. What are some other ones? Those were elements. What kind of compounds would they know? Well, you said salt. salt so table water. salt. Water. Water. I would think water would be the first one, mm -hmm. the most common one. Yeah. What else? I almost feel like that would kind of be a misconception too. That people, I feel like a lot of people think that water is is, is not. It's pure. Out. Yeah. Remember, you can buy a bottle of it. It's mm -hmm. pure. Exactly. And cat the planet, you know, it's an element. Water, fire, heart. <sighs> okay, so you said water. You said salt. What uh, else? Come on, colleagues, help them out. <laughs> this is collaborative planning, remember? Yes. Well, everything else that's not an element is a compound, so it's sugar. Sugar? Sugar. Yeah, because sugar looks like salt, but they're completely different. Oh, that's a good point. What would be some other compound that they would be commonly exposed to? Hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> what? Say hydrogen peroxide. I don't think that'd be common. Not that you can't use it, but you don't use it first. Yeah. We think about what is it they would most likely be familiar with. What? what? Limestone. Limestone. What? Limestone. Especially for our area. If you've gone outside, you've seen limestone. You've picked up limestone. Maybe. It depends on your students. Yeah. What else? Baking plastic. soda. Baking soda, maybe. Oh, plastic. Plastic. Yeah, but that's not a simple compound. Yeah. That's. Probably it's everything. It's probably stuff that's <laughs> made up of different compounds. Gasoline. Like complex. Complex, yeah. Fuel. Okay, so that's as far as you've gotten with your lesson. So you know where to go next. Okay. All right, team two. Uh, while you're putting, uh, do you have it you're printed out like that? We put it on the dock paper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there. probably seen me in here before if I have not um, officially introduced myself. But uh, I was the IA for the past couple of semesters, so I'm very familiar. And I took the class before that, so I'm very familiar with what you guys are doing. So, um, do you ever need anything? Oh, no. um, I just wanted to share an opportunity with you guys. I'm in a mentoring across the lifespan uh, graduate course, and we are um, trying to recruit some undergrads that are in um, STEM education to come to um, but I've got it up here on the dot cam too so there's basically three different kind of projects that we have going on a stem research project a stem girls project and a stem leadership project so we're looking for undergrads in um, stem who would like some support like some mentoring um, if you are pursuing research in the stem field and that's something that you are maybe not very comfortable with, then uh, we have a, a mentoring support group that will help you to kind of identify how to pick a research question and kind of how to use the databases, how to get started with some research in the STEM field. We you also got give them an example, would you? An example of STEM research that they would be interested in as an undergraduate. 
Hmm. Well, what are you guys interested in? Um, it's so broad. There's so many different things that we can, well, and that's what we're going to be doing at the first group, is we're going to be looking at uh, people's interests and talking about what kind, what kind of routes might we take. What are you interested in, in knowing more about? Um, a, a sample question that kind of came up was, um, why are people of um, minorities and women not sticking with a STEM program? There are a lot of um, minorities and women who uh, sign up and begin a STEM program. It's not that they don't graduate, but they end up switching programs. And so that might be something to look into. So that's just an idea um, of one route to take. The, um, the girls, it's all about empowering girls in STEM. Um, I'm not sure if you know Lisa Hansen. She just finished her master's degree last semester here in the biology department. She's heading that one. I'm heading up the, um, the research project one. And um, then there's also one for STEM leadership. I think, Alexis, you said that one might be one that you were interested in. I like the girls one. The girls one, OK, sorry. <laughs> so um, again, these are just, it's completely optional, completely voluntary. We meet for um, about three hours the last Saturday of the month. and. Um, we just talked about how how much more successful undergrads are when they have support. And so um, I know that I kind of floundered through my undergrad, um, took too many classes, didn't really know what I was doing because I didn't have any sort of support, anybody to kind of guide me along the way. So um, this is free. Take advantage of it if you'd like. We would love to have you. Uh, there's contact information. There's like a little kind of uh, questionnaire so we can get to know you. Um, figure out what your interests are so we can kind of place you and um, we would love to hear what, from you. What might be helpful uh, too is to ask them where they need, either currently need mentoring or needed mentoring earlier in their program. Because uh, okay. this is through a grant so we're hoping to um, expand this whole idea greatly. So we're just starting with these little groups to um, so that we can find out, um, and a lot. Even though these are the focuses, there's a lot of just how are you doing? What do you need help with? Um, how can we help? Writing a lesson plan for Dr. West. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little bit of experience with that too. So, um, so just feel free to contact me, or um, Dr. Collins is the one who's in charge of the program. All the information is on there. Actually, my I'm actually on your tracks website so you can find me there too but um, that's my email address. So that's all. Thank you Sarah. Thank you. Oh I came back here to get my stuff but my stuff's not here. <laughs> 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 all right. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks Sarah. Oh, okay. okay so uh, it's team two. Yeah. Tell us where you are with this. Oh, yeah. well, um, you know what we can do? I have paper copies. And Elise, I have a paper copy of the framework. Uh, Does somebody need one of these? There's an extra one.